So we're going to let Liz share an equally amazing story at this time, and then we'll we'll get to the question and answer period. Let's welcome Liz one more time. All right, that's going to be difficult to follow. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, some of you know this, that I'm a history teacher here at the high school, and so I'm going to give you a history lesson. Um, but I kind of I try to make it fun. Um, anyway, I'm going to give you some history of Poland. Since her um, parents were Polish Jews, also my story of um, Irina Sindler was also in Warsaw, Poland. So just miles apart in the same situation, um, but different <coughs> stories too. And the Warsaw ghetto ended up being about 14 blocks, and that's roughly from McDonald's to Price Cutter, where they forced 450,000 Jews into 15 blocks. That ended up being about seven people per room. And that didn't mean those seven people were your family. Obviously, during this time, too, they don't, um, indoor plumbing is just starting. Um, not everybody had indoor plumbing. Some of you probably didn't even have indoor plumbing when you were in high school, right? <laughs> I know my grandparents told me about when they first got indoor plumbing, and that was in the 50s and 60s. So in the 40s, they're still trying to get indoor plumbing. doesn't work real well either. So if you can imagine, the worst part of town is where they were forced to live, and in very unsanitary conditions as well. In the Warsaw Ghetto, almost always you were deported to Treblinka. And Treblinka was just a death camp outside of Warsaw, about 90 miles. I've been there. Um, unlike most of the concentration camps and death camps around, this one um, was destroyed right afterward. And it was just a death camp, so whenever the Nazis um, would bring in the Jews from the ghetto. They were taking off, taken off the trains and they were, get, they were put into a gas chamber and they were killed immediately. So if you ever visit there today though, it doesn't look like a regular concentration camp as today. If you go visit Auschwitz, um, Dachau, most of those places have reestablished some of their, um, what it would have looked like. Um, they have some of the same barracks and things, but at Treblinka there's nothing there. Um, it's in the middle of a cedar forest, and um, there's rocks everywhere, and each one of those rocks represented a Jewish town that was destroyed by the Nazis. 